This is our second time of the first, we had a little technical difficulty on the first try, but this is Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. Happy Tuesday, happy Taco Tuesday. If you can, please go out there and support your favorite taco truck. And let me share the screen. Here is the heat map. Most of the heat is being shown in the right corner over here. Healthcare is doing well, except for Eli Lilly. Energy is up. Real estate seems to be up. Utilities, basic materials, the bond and the dollar dropped a little bit from their big uh, surge that they had over the last two days. So that is that. We well, can move on here, share the screen. If you don't like the ups and downs of the stock market, I'm just trying to find my screen here. Let's see, annuity screen. No, I would say 85 to 95%, 85 to 90% of people should be, have some money in an annuity. It beats index investing by about 5%. It does not lose money. It will keep going up and up and up the steps and eventually double your money while the market can lose money. In 2008, it went down over 50%, the S&P 500. There's always a potential to do that again. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to get in touch with me. We just uh, closed a couple of annuities over the weekend. And that is the story. And let's now go to our screens. Here's the healthcare sector ETF. It's been just streaking higher and higher and higher. Had a one day pause here. Well, had a pretty good volume yesterday and on Friday. No, on Thursday, it looks like. Looks like we got pretty good volume again today. Since we're started with the ETFs, so let's just continue. Here's the energy ETF. Got a little bounce today off of the 50 day moving average. Look at the oil price. Uh, moved higher than that was turned tail. Here's the communication sector. It's trailing a little bit, a little bit reduction in meta today, but it's still holding above the gap. Like I said, if the stock gaps up and it holds that gap, it's safe to hold it. Microsoft is pulling back a little bit, <clears throat> added um, to Microsoft to want to pull back to the 10 day moving average in one of the accounts to manage. And Apple is moving up. Netflix is pausing a little bit, but it's still above. The gap here. <clears throat> Google looks like it's trying to recover a little bit. It's, it's pretty flat for the day. NVIDIA, the big pullback. Tesla is up slightly today. Up, up about a percent. We'll see if uh, people think it has hit bottom. Um, Eli Lilly probably might be in the news. Earnings up 19%. I guess they were looking for a little more as it moved up and then sold off. <clears throat> so let's continue with our journey. Here's the dollar index. 
pulling back to its 50-day moving average off uh, five cents in the big move. We'll see if it fills the gap. Silver up slightly. Gold up uh, about a half of a percent. Our favorite copper is up two and a half percent. We'll try to see if uh, what direction it's hard to pin these down to see if it's going to break out or or whatnot. Southern copper got a big move, uh, gapped up and is bouncing off the 50 day moving average of 2.78%. FCX, same thing, up 3.6%. Fale gapped up as well, up 2.13%. BHP, which had gotten pretty low below its 200 day, it's gapped up above that. And finally, Rio. A lot of these have some pretty good dividends. Rio has a 5% dividend. Let's look at our bond yields, treasury bond yields. Pulling back is still above 4%, though. Um, it's pulling below its 200 day, still above its 50 day. It's at 4.09. We got our 20 year yield pulling back as well to the two day, 10 day, 10, 20, and 50 day moving average are all kind of together off 1.8% down to 3.27. Take a look at the VIX. The VIX is shy. We like it when it's shy. It's pulling back a little bit. 13.54. It had this big spike, which we were expecting pulling back. And we'll just see how the data comes in. If it will move up to the 18 area, 1812, I believe is the target. Eventually we think it'll hit S&P 500. Um, pretty flat. The equal weight S&P 500 is up about a half a percent. The NASDAQ, pretty flat. It was down about a half a percent. The equal weight, take out all the big cap techs. And it's down 0.13. See if IWM recovered any. It did recover. It's up to the 50-day moving average at 0.4. And the Dow Jones. is up 0.17 and now we turn to the news of the day see can look at a few earnings before we open this morning agco um, moved up pretty high and then sold off strong amatec 11% uh, earnings i guess it didn't move too many people. Arc best in the shipping. Um, people are pretty happy with a 1% return. They thought it would be less. It's up 10% today. And I guess my screen here is just going to annoy me all day. Keep shutting down. Aramark. Try to move higher, turn tail. Carrier Global didn't do as well as ArcBest, off 2.29%. Centene pulled back pretty strong, and now it's fighting to get it back to slightly above yesterday. See if there's any other ones. We're not going to go through all of these. We may buy serve selling off down 2.41%. Uh, Commerce Secretary Ramondo 
said in an interview late Monday that the U.S. expects to announce the next six to eight weeks several more semiconductor chips funding announcements. Notes that there is no artificial timeline and vows to award semiconductor funds as fast as possible, but get it right. The 3% gain for the Shanghai and over 4% surge in the Hang Seng came after reports of increased ETF buying from a state fund and the S no CSRC pledged to increase efforts to guide funds and investors into the market and support listed firms. R, the RBA kept rates on hold and expected analysis, but retained um, their hawkish lean despite some expectation that they may pivot to become more neutral. Japanese wage inflation uh, data was softer than expected in December. Labor cash earnings rose 1% year over year. Okay, now we are going to the sector news. Bell ring. Pretty flat, down 1% today. Quarter one EPS, 43 cents versus estimate 39 cents. Chegg, quarter four EPS, 36 cents versus estimate 36 cents flat. And it sold off. Their earnings were down 10% for the quarter. J and J snack foods, quarter one EPS, 52 cents versus 78 cents. A big drop down 6.44%, even though their earnings increased 24% quarter over quarter. Skyline Champion. Quarter three EPS, 81 cents versus estimate 64 cents. And <clears throat> big, a big move there, even though it was down 43% versus the quarter last year, down up 10.3%. Toyota Motor moving, raised its full year operating profit forecast by nearly 9% and revenues 43.5 trillion from 43 trillion trillion um one so that's the story with that a big gap up and it's in the high part of the range onto energy industrials and materials cabot quarter one adjust the eps a dollar 56 versus dollar 49 and a big move off the 200 day moving average their earnings increased 59 percent champion x to increase share repurchase program by 750 million Quarter four adjusted EPS, 44 cents versus 44 cents. It was flat, but I guess they cheered on the buyback of their shares. Crown Holdings, quarter four EPS, $1.24 versus $1.43. And yes, significant downturn on missing their estimates by quite a margin. DD, DuPont de Moors. Moving up 7.4%, even though their earnings came in a negative 2%. FMC, quarter four adjusted EPS, $1.7 versus $1.8. And they're gapping down, down 10%. Hill and Brand adjusted EPS, $0.69 cents versus $0.68. Cents. That wasn't happy for the crowd, down almost 5%. Simpson Manufacturing. Quarter four EPS a dollar twenty eight versus a dollar forty nine, and as you can tell, tried to go up, but it sold off on missing those estimates again. Symbotic quarter one EPS lost two cents versus estimate of six cents, and it's gapping down on that news onto financials. K force. Quarter four adjusted EPS, 82 cents versus 79 cents. For some reason. I guess they had this listed wrong in the news here. So it tried to move higher on 134% earnings increase, but it's off 1.7%. Simon Property Group, quarter four FFO a share, $3.69 versus estimate $3.34. And it's sharing that, just a two cent difference, up nearly 
Verona Systems, quarter four EPS, 27 cents versus 23 cents. Gaps up on 29% earnings increase. And it's up 6% on the healthcare. Oh, we saw all the green today. 4D Molecular files to sell $250 million of common stock. And that was off slightly. I guess they're taking advantage of the big boosts in the shares. GE Healthcare up a good amount today. Quarter four adjusted EPS $1.18 versus $1.07. Gaps up and is up near its high, 12.36%. Novartis to acquire Morphosis, M-O-R. Novartis is up slightly, 0.19%. And Morphosis um, must have been the news yesterday. Um, Pulling back slightly today, 3.8%. Vertex. Slightly down, down 3%. Announces positive results from pivotal trials of Van Zakaflux. Uh, Tesca Floor. And... One other drug, next in class, triple combination treatment for cystic fibrosis, quarter four EPS, $4.20 versus $4.10. On to technology, media and telecom. Amcor Technologies, quarter four EPS, $0.48 cents versus $0.41, cents, selling off slightly on a negative 20% earnings decline. Coherent, quarter two. Just at EPS, 36 cents versus 26 cents. And yes, we got a gap up. Earnings declined 62%, but beat the estimate up nearly 20%. They make modular laser processing heads, fiber optic cables, and the such. Fabrinet, quarter two EPS, $2.08 versus $2.03, and a big gap down on a 9% earnings increase. Even though it beat the estimates, it probably didn't beat the earnings whispers. NXP Semiconductor, quarter four adjusted EPS 371, tops estimate of 365, is up slightly with a 34% earnings beat. The big mover today is Palantir. You could have bought it after hours, up only 16%. So it's up about 30% right now. So that would have been a nice beat. I'm sorry, I didn't take advantage. Rambus is a big loser. Quarter four EPS, 53 cents versus estimate 45 cents of 48% earnings increase and a 20% drop in their stock price. Spotify, quarter four revenue up 16% at 367 billion euros versus estimate of 372 even though they missed the stock is up 3.78 percent taiwan semiconductors said it will build the second japanese plant to begin operation by the end of 2027 bringing total investment in Jap japan venture to more than 20 billion with the support of the tokyo government japan's industry ministry said it will extend subsidies worth as much as 242.9 billion for Bain Capital Back, Kioxia, and Western Digital to expand memory chip production. And in the Mia and Iwati prefectures, I guess that's counties. Um, so that's slightly down. 0.11%, and that is the news of the day. So we had a downturn in Kava, a big pullback. Right around here, so we added some shares. We actually had some shorts. We put on the 46, 49, 
spread. So we took off some of the shorts today on that one and on another account added some shares. On Globe, we had a big pullback down to 228 and it seemed appetizing at the time. So what we did, we put on the 235-240 spread uh, with the earnings coming up shortly. I believe it, earnings is in seven to 10 days. Um, yeah, nine days. Let's take a look at some other issues that we took advantage of a little bit of a pullback earlier in the day. We added a kind of a probing position. It looked like we have a little pocket pivot on Celsius Holdings. Their earnings are in 30 days. We'll see if this can continue. We got a double bottom here. It broke out above the double bottom. And we'll see how that goes. We got into DWAC, we put in order yesterday on this pullback. So I believe it's 45.50. It's hard to read this, it's kind of tiny. Yeah, it's 45.50 spread. So we'll see how that reacts. It's been building the right side of the cup kind of formation here. We've got to figure out what we're going to put on Elf Beauty. We're going to hedge this. Their earnings are after the bell today and it's doing pretty strong. We just want to protect our investment there. ESTC on the pullback today on ESTC. We added a, we added a spread. Uh, ESTC, I believe it was a 125, 130 spread. We put two of those on. That is correct. Meta on the pullback, we added 10 shares. And, it, and it's holding, as long as it holds 452, which was the low of the gap up, They'll want to hold on to that. Right before the, the bell or earlier, we put on a 495, 500 spread on MicroStrategy. Their earnings are after the bell. We wanted to get back into that. Uh, looks like a good opportunity. So we'll just see if uh, we close out the short side of the 500 uh, tomorrow. So that uh, spread is for February 9th, this Friday. So we'll just take a look at that. Uh, and I believe that is it. Take a look at some of the spreads we put on yesterday, see how they're doing. Zscaler, when it was below 230, we put on the 230, I believe it was a 230, oh, it was just a call option. So we're just going to see if that eventually rallies back. Some of the other spreads we have on, we have app, this holding firm there, it's, we have a 4550 spread. Datadog pulled back a little bit. We didn't really do anything to it. It looks like it's filling the gap here. Uh, many stocks will fill the gap and then return to the increase. We'll just kind of wait and see as it gets closer to the earnings. GitLab, we didn't really do anything with um, its pullback here, pull back to the 20 day moving average. We'll just see how it reacts over the next coming days. And now let's go take a look at what was moving in the market uh, today.
<clears throat> Supermicro continues to perform, was up a little higher. Uh, it's up 0.6%. We looked at Palantir, we looked at Toyota Motors, Checkpoint Software. Looks like breaking out of this little tight formation, up 1.87%. KKR, gapping up. Now they broke out over here, so it's kind of getting extended. Keeps moving up, it's up another 4.26%. Fomento Economy Mexico produces Coca-Cola beverages. So it broke out at 133.72 and it keeps moving on up. Many of the Coca-Cola across the globe seem to be doing well. There's a European one as well. I don't know the ticker symbol, otherwise I'd bring that up. Fortinet is up 1%. Earnings are due today. Now, this is Weatherford. With the oil prices kind of moving around, it's trying to move up again. Their earnings are after the bell today. Pinterest. Trying to move up. It broke out at 38. 33, pulled back to the 20 day moving average. I guess if you bought it, you could have added some, even though you're at a loss here. Would have been better if you had bought it here and you had a pullback to here. That would be a place to add. Could have added here, here, and it just keeps moving up. We talked more in detail on our Saturday weekend update about adding to already successful positions. So that's kind of the look there. And then we can go to our daily routine here. Xylem. Is gapping up. They had 8% earnings increase up 4.6%. Verona Systems gapping up. Now they're on their low up near 5.9%. As you can see, this is where professional money managers are putting their money. These blue bars aren't your Aunt Edna. KKR, which we just saw up a thousand percent. Toyota Motor, once again, this is professional money managers putting their money in, big gap up, and Valvoline. Valvoline, this is some consolidation, pull back here, their earnings were up 81%. It looks like slightly above average volume, up 5% with 100% volume increase. Anta Sports Products, a Chinese-based company and manufacturers. Got a lot of buying over here, a lot of blue buying. Here, here was ArcBest, which we saw in the news. Had selling yesterday, and then people bought it back. So we got two out of three days of strong buying. Bit of British Petroleum got a gap up. Huge buying volume here, even though their earnings decline 33%. Corporate America Airports, Luxembourg-based company engaged in development and operation of airports gapping up here. We got a breakout up 7.26% on massive volume. Uh, we looked at Cabot in the news. It would have been nicer if this was higher volume uh, on the selling days, but uh, must be something going. Yeah, the earnings came out at 
and Champion X kind of bouncing with neg uh, positive 2% earnings and then with the movement in the oil today. And then up 10% on 200 in increase in volume. This coherent is on the news. Gap up, even though 62% earnings decrease. Two, three days in a row, strong professional money managers buying into this. GE Healthcare, we saw in the news as well, strong buying volume gapping out of this consolidation and breaking out of the 78.43 buy point. And this is Immunome develop, develops and commercializes antibody therapeutics. It's up a uh, pretty big And finally, was Palantir, which we looked at earlier. And let's take a look at this company, which is getting close to a buy point. Their earnings are upcoming nine days. So that that's, um, I guess you could put on an option uh, right around 400, maybe 400, 410 but it definitely looks like it's setting up. we got a cup and a little bit of a handle here. So that's um, our show for today. This is Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. Sometimes we offer some entertainment value. We hope you all have a great Tuesday. Keep working on your goals and your activities. And we hope to see you out in the street. And if you have any financial goals or activities, we questions we can help you with, uh, just shoot us a comment on our YouTube page. In the meantime, have a great day. Keep, keep working and we'll see you at the end of the week and we'll meet you in the middle of the week tomorrow.